Thanks for joining us, Will, on the Steve Woods VIP YouTube channel. Um, just tell us, where are you at the moment during during lockdown? Just currently still on the, on the uh, GB team. So, um, as you know, it was out with me and uh, a few other fighters on the team to go to the Tokyo Olympics. Um, Galau Yafai went to the qualification and qualified. Um, so now I'm just... I'm 50-50 about turning pro or what I'm going to do yet. Just, to be with. Yeah, I just saw an email just now, a press release come through, and uh, the GB squad are moving back into phase two of training next week, and which I think they can spar and stuff. Are you off to do that? Yeah, I should be in there next week now. Um, I've been off too long now. This lockdown's driving me mental, man. Um, so hopefully I'll be back in next week, back in the swing of things and getting back to it. So what do, you, what do you think you'll do? Because obviously you could still go and, you know, I think you're only 20. Is it 22 still? 22, yeah. Yeah, you can like, still... I'm, I'm still a baby in the game. Like, I, if I wanted to, I could stay on and go to another Olympics. But I see myself as one of the best boxers at flyweight, bantamweight, or even super bantamweight in the country. And I think I could easily move to the pro game and capture a title there easily British I feel and other people feel and world level as I say I'm still a baby I'm still 22 but I can learn I can develop and I can do them things I've got confidence in myself and I think I can do that you know what I mean so it's whatever I choose to do mate really to be honest um, yeah yeah so I mean you say you're thinking of turning professional but are you 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 know, you're not tempted to go to another couple of qualifiers to try and get there and then think, well, I'll stay for the Olympics now. Yeah, the, the GB team, the, the, the setup, it's unbelievable. Um, I've got some good, I've got some, I've made some friends for life, the coaches, it's like a family up there, do you know what I mean? So it's a hard, it'd be a hard decision to turn pro, but it's also, it's not 100% if I'll, I'll turn pro yet. I might stay for maybe another Olympics, I don't know yet. but. Um, yeah, the, the, the GB setup is it's a, it's a next level. Um, they're taking you all over the world. You're boxing all these other countries what you've you never even heard of. These Russians, these Kazakhs, and unbelievable experiences. I mean, so you so, could wait for the well, what would be the 2024 Olympics. You'd still be mid 20s. But there's also the temptation of a Commonwealth Games in 22 if the, play, if, if the, you know, the Tokyo place has gone to Yafai. Yeah. That, that's what I mean. So, the Commonwealths are in Birmingham, aren't they? So, it's in England. It'd be interesting. It'd be um, be enjoyable. But there's, 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 there's still a few things that I want to do on the amateur scene that I've not yet done. I've been to the Europeans. I've got a silver in the Europeans. I went to the under-22 Europeans. I've got a bronze in that. And now I feel like I'm 22 and I'm just coming to the best. As an amateur, like, I'm peaking. I, I've boxed all these best boys. I've boxed, I beat the world bronze medalist and I've, you know what I mean? So I feel like maybe in two years, maybe I'm going to be one of the best amateurs around. I get or, the impression, sorry. Or, I get the impression you're edging towards going professional pretty soon. I've had some, I've had some, I've had some interesting offers, we'll say the least anyway, but we'll see what happens, mate. Like, um, I'm in no rush. I'm I'm in no position to get out there and start panic rushing and signing every contract that comes my way. Really, I'm in no rush, so I'm in a comfortable position and I'm enjoying it. So it is what it is. Who, who's been making you the offers? Ah, uh, come on! Loose, loose lips sink ships. Oh, I'm you not trying to that. sink a ship. I'm fine. No, no. Um, I've been in. Sp I've, I've spoke to the likes of like Charlie Sims. Um, on, on obviously the matchroom deals, I spoke to the likes of uh, MTK, um, Steve Steve Woods. Uh, I was speaking to young Danny Wright. You wanted to come down and uh, me come down and have a meeting with him. But Danny's a nice fellow. I've known him for uh, we both won the ABAs together. Um, but like I say, it's just, it's just I don't I, I can't do nothing with this lockdown. I don't want to put myself out there as a professional in the middle of a lockdown. Yeah, of course, yeah. You know what I mean? I want, 
I want to turn around and be like, I'm, I'm on the scene now. Everybody, right? I'm ready to fight. Three more time. I'm, I'm, I'm in the MEN or I'm in wherever or not in copper box or that's what I want. I don't want to be unprofessional and then fighting behind closed doors kind of thing. Yeah. So, um, what way do you think you'll turn professional at initially? I know you, you know, you, you're above, you're just about 115 pounds, aren't you, as a yeah. amateur? So I'll, I'll probably start off as bantam, super bantam. And then grow into a feather, I'd guess, yeah. Well, hopefully, like um, I've, I've sparred a few few of the heavier boys, like uh, Josh Warren and Kid Galahad. I feel like um, I'll grow into that weight soon enough. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just, yeah. But also, I think I'll be the best at bantam or super bantam. Yeah. How soon do you think you can win a British title? <laughs> You're asking me who thinks I, I can. I, I think I can take on anyone, mate. So. Um, Seriously, could you turn pro and win a British title in your in your second or third fight? Do you think? I feel like I could. I like, see, we've we've had the. I, I was having these talks at seventeen with my uh, with my brother and the likes of my coach Eric Noy, who uh, he boxed under um, Champs Camp. Yeah, I know. I know Eric really well. You... Yeah. So um, it come around. I was seventeen, and uh, I went to spar Paul Butler, who was world champion at the time. And uh, my brother was showing me videos in the car. He was saying, now this is, this is where you're going to test yourself here. Got, in the, got into the spa, did very well. And I thought, you know what, I could turn pro now tomorrow and I feel like I could have won a British title. And now I'm even better. So I think I, think I could do it. I mean, there's some good British lads around them, Banks and Wait Wait, so aren't there? But at world level, it's elite, isn't it? Anui and all these sort of guys. Yeah. Thing is, at world level, you know, you've got them. You've got them Mexicans. Without uh, is it Martinez? Yeah, yeah he, he's a super flying. The man's an animal, and he's a machine. And then you've got the guy that beat um, Tete at bantamweight, um, Casemiro. Yeah. You've got Casemiro. a Nui. I mean, they're they're like another level, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, hopefully, when I get to that point, they'll be gone. <laughs> they'll, be a, they'll be a new era, I hope. Hey. Um, but I tell you what, there's one way I look at it. If you get to that point. And they're still about. You're going to be earning a shed load of money to fight them. That's what I want. It's the money where I'm at. Do you know what I mean? So, um, no. But there's some good bantam weights in uh, in England as well. Uh, young Dennis McCann. He's, yeah, he's that's a, a great fighter. You must know him from the amateur circuit. Um. Well, I I was already senior when he was about, so I didn't really like meet him too much. But I know I'm speak to him quite a bit. He's, he's a nice boy. Um. Shabazz, Shabazz is a good fighter as yeah, well. Yeah, Shabazz Masood, yeah. Lee McGregor, who was on um, the team with me, on the GB team, Jack Bateson. All good fighters. Um, be good to be in the mix. Be good to be in the mix. And you, you, you mentioned names there like Shabazz Masood, Dennis McCann. And, you know, without getting, us getting too carried away, in three, four, five years, or say five years' time, you sort of guys could be having a series against each other because you're, yeah. you're, you're all outstanding talents. Yeah, this is what I mean. Um, they've got they've got they've got about a year or two ahead of me as I'm not professional yet. But I've got the amateur stead where they ain't they ain't got that. They ain't come against Kazakhstan's and Russians and these people. Are, like I've had four fights in four days against Kazakh, Russia, Germany. These people want to kill you. So I've I've got that experience. They've got experience up to yet. No disrespect is they boxed a few journeymen. Obviously they beat them, got them out there. But there's a different there's a different level once you get to that. I tell you what, one thing you and Shabazz haven't both got. You've got loads of confidence, haven't you? All the three of you, you just mentioned that the other two yeah. names. You're absolutely. You all, you all think you could win it. You if you are put you three in a row. You, you could ask all three what you could do tomorrow. And you'd both all say you'd beat Anui in two rounds if you got to him, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. You know what it is? That's small man syndrome, isn't it? you got a little <laughs> man's disease, all of you. That's what it is, isn't it? That's what it is. No, but um, I can't wait to be on the scene. About, like, them boys are good boys, you know what I mean? I've known Shabazz for years. I know Dennis, Nolly, and they're all good boys, you know what I mean? So it's good to be around them and then There'll be a bit of rivalry there as well. I've got I've got a few um few pros I'm gonna take take care of when I turn.
But Lee's got to be the one to beat. He's the British champion. I was, speak- oh, I was speaking to Lee the other day, um, just after he beat, um, was it Cash Farouk? Yeah, great fight. Yeah, Another good, good fighter, Cash Farouk. Yeah, he's a good fighter. Very good fighter. He impressed me, actually, against Lee. Uh, I, thought Lee I thought Lee did enough, but um, it was a good fight. I was speaking to Leo saying, when you moving up, man, he's too big. Too big for that weight. He's, he's huge, isn't he? Yeah. So if you did say, say amateur, obviously you're going to go back to Sheffield next week. And, you know, you, I, I guess over the next couple of months, you'll decide, you know, so you know you're not going to the Olympics now, you know, next year. Um, what, what are the other things for you to achieve as am, an amateur that hasn't been achieved yet? So the, the World Championships. No, when are they due? I'm not too sure, to be honest, with all this that's going on, I'm not too sure. Um, I'd obviously love to get a medal in that. To, like, obviously, base myself as one of the world best amateurs. Um, and then it's the Commonwealth. I've never been to the Commonwealth and then the Olympics. But that's three tournaments that I could do in the next three years if I wanted to, do you know what I mean? So, yeah. You talk about you know, um, professional rivalries there, you know, like Lee... Shabazz, uh, you know, these sort of guys. Um, but if you stay for another Olympics, the chance of you getting to them are more and more remote because they were, they'll be a long way past you then. You'll be starting out on that pro journey. This is the thing, right? So, they might, in three years' time, say they could be on European level or maybe world level. They'd be at world level. Yeah, so... But if I go... A win an Olympic gold medal and then turn professional. The, the ball's in my court because I'm an Olympic yeah. champion. I could get fast tracked in, you know what I mean? But obviously, you never know what happens. It's, nothing's guaranteed in life. So you just have to see what happens and take uh, each step at a time. Just, just moving away from boxing, well, what else do you, do you get up to? Any other hobbies? Not much, you know, mate. Not really. I'm just, um, just chill out, really. Just usually, uh, I'm on the phone or watching telly or on the Xbox or, you know what I mean? Same old shit, really. Like most boxers on the Xbox, challenging each other. If I'm not on the Xbox, I'm rather on the the FaceTime to my my mate uh, Mark Dickinson, another GD boxer. Me and him just have a good bit of like good laugh on the on the phone, and that's about it, really, mate. Yeah. Well, fine, just t- tell us a bit about your relationship with Eric Noy, because I've known Eric since the, oh, too long, since the 90s. <laughs> the big man, the big, the big man. man. He, he gets bigger, he gets bigger. I haven't seen him for about six, seven months. He gets wider and bigger every time I see him. Oh, yeah. He gets stronger as well. Really? I feel his hands on the pads, man. He gets stronger. Um, and also... My brother got me into boxing at 11. My brother used to box on, like, used to train under Eric. Um, started off there and then I've never, never been to a different, apart from the GB coaches, I've never been to a different gym. Never a different coach. I've always been under Eric, which he's, which his style he um, teaches. You can see in my boxing, he has that Cuban style. He has that relaxation. The movement, you know what I mean? That's what that's what he teaches. So t- tell us a bit more about your style. Do you see yourself as a bit of a Cuban then? Lightning quick reflexes, moving, but can also go forward. I'm a bit of everything really, you know. I um, half think of myself I can punch a bit, I can move, I can dance, I can romance, I can do it all. I can do it all. <laughs> <laughs> who, who are your boxing heroes? Prince Nazim Hamid. I can Penel see Whitaker. that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can see that. You can tell that, can't you? Um, Penel Whitaker and a bit of Floyd Mayweather, I'd say. There's, yeah. there's my top three. Yeah, there are some good fighters there. Right? I mean, the, the, the two defensive geniuses there as well. Yeah, um, I used to watch a lot of Penel Whitaker. Um, it was Eric who actually got me onto him. He used to get me on the pads and uh, he used to have me rolling but sitting right down on my, on my legs. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and he was thinking, what's he doing here? Then obviously when I was sparring, I was just dipping and just moving, do you know what I mean? Just perfecting it. Have you, have you ever met Nazim Hamid yet? No, I've never met him. I've just seen, I, I'm, funny actually, I've just seen his son, um, his son started boxing, hasn't he? 
Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His son's just started boxing a um, featherweight. So, that could be an interesting uh, fight down the line for me and him, couldn't it? Yeah. So, what, have you lived in Oldham all your life? Yeah, well, Oldham all my life, yeah. But now, obviously, I stay down Sheffield Monday to Thursday. Yeah. And when, when, when you do go pro, is Eric likely to turn over with you? Yeah, Eric will be a big part of the team. Um, he'll rather be coach or he's going to be a part of something. Because he's a very smart man and a um, very good coach also. Yeah. So finally, a message for everybody who might not have um, seen you, who might not be familiar with the GB setup, who are just into professional boxing. What's your message to those people who are going to become fans of you when you turn over? Keep watching. Uh, tune in and enjoy the rest. For all boxing, info, news and latest interviews, Amateur and Pro, across the north, click and subscribe. VIP, boxing promotions. Also, Twitter, Instagram and Facebook.